The importance of hair in the realm of music was unparalleled so much so that an entire genre took its moniker from it. At its zenith, the style of hair metal was as distinct and extravagant as the flamboyant performances of drag queens sinking to disco anthems. Whether achieved through towering wigs or a generous application of aqua net, voluminous locks became synonymous with an exaggerated presentation that mirrored the fervor of the music itself. Some bands fully embraced the rock fashion and cosmetics synonymous with the era, while others took a more understated approach. Regardless, the common thread among them all was the hair even those who claimed allegiance to hard rock or glam rock couldn't deny its allure. Hair metal bands often leaned into absurdity, unabashedly objectifying women and prioritizing career advancement. Flourishing from the early 1980s to the early 1990s, the genre found its pulse sandwiched between the triumph of Van Halen, a guiding light for many hair metal acts, and the arrival of Nirvana, whose grunge sound heralded the genre's demise. While its epicenter resided within the confines of a few city blocks, the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, a veritable hair metal haven during the 1980s, its influence knew no bounds, thanks in part to music videos that enjoyed heavy rotation on various platforms. A well-crafted video, blending infectious tunes with extravagant visuals, could catapult a band to stardom. Thus, the genre's zenith moments continue to captivate audiences. Here are 15 of the most enduring examples. Death Leopard, Rock of Ages, 1983. Rock of Ages not only epitomized the essence of the hair metal genre, but also showcased Def Leppard's pioneering approach to blending diverse musical elements, drawing inspiration from a wide array of sources, including biblical imagery and cinematic references. The song transcended conventional rock boundaries, cementing its place as a timeless anthem. Despite their association with the glamour of 80s rock, Def Leppard distinguished themselves by their meticulous approach to music production. The band's meticulous attention to detail, exemplified by their recording process for the Hysteria album, set them apart from their peers. By eschewing the excesses of Hollywood, they prioritized artistic integrity, ultimately yielding groundbreaking albums that resonated with audiences worldwide. Moreover, Rock of Ages serves as a testament to Def Leppard's enduring influence on popular culture. Beyond its initial success, the song's legacy endures through its inclusion in the hit jukebox musical, underscoring its timeless appeal. Def Leppard's refusal to be confined by labels or stereotypes further underscores their significance as trailblazers in the rock genre, inspiring generations of musicians to chart their own creative paths. Autograph, Turn Up the Radio, 1984. Autograph's ascent to prominence within the rock scene is punctuated by a series of remarkable anecdotes, underscoring their tenacity and ingenuity. Notably, their inaugural live performances unfolded as the opening act for none other than Van Halen, even before securing a record deal. The fortuitous connection between Autograph's drummer Kenny Richards and Van Halen's charismatic frontman David Lee Roth, sparked by a chance encounter during a jog, epitomizes the serendipitous nature of the music industry. Autograph's moniker not only reflects their artistic identity, but also played a pivotal role in securing a sponsorship from Paper Mate. This alliance not only provided financial support, but also afforded the band valuable exposure, propelling them onto the national stage. In addition to their strategic branding, Autograph's music also showcased innovative production techniques, such as the incorporation of backward drums, a beloved hallmark of the genre. This creative flourish added depth and texture to their sound, distinguishing them from their peers and solidifying their status as pioneers within the rock landscape. Ultimately, Autograph's journey serves as a testament to the power of perseverance, resourcefulness, and creative innovation in the pursuit of musical excellence. Rat, Round and Round, 1984. The lyrics, Looking at You Looking at Me, not only capture the exhilarating intensity of a budding romance, but also reflect the dynamic interaction between metal bands and their devoted followers. This sentiment resonates with the fashion interchangeability observed within the metal community, where bands and fans alike express their individuality through style. Moreover, the music video for the song cleverly explores themes of class disparity, as guitarist Warren Demartini disrupts a highbrow dinner gathering by dramatically crashing through the ceiling, disrupting the pristine ambience with his electric presence. This juxtaposition of gritty rock culture against the backdrop of opulent sophistication adds a layer of social commentary to the visual narrative, elevating the song's impact beyond its musical prowess. Poison, Cry Tough 1986. 
Poison's inaugural single kicked off with the iconic drumbeat borrowed from the girl group classic Be My Baby, originally released by the Ronettes in 1963. The band's members adorned themselves with an abundance of mascara, evoking a visual aesthetic reminiscent of Ronnie Spector herself. Despite later garnering fame for his flamboyant persona and oversexed escapades on reality television's Rock of Love, lead singer Brett Michaels initially tapped into the emotional resonance of the girl group era. He skillfully conveyed a facade of confidence, mirroring the allure of those timeless hits. Yet beneath the surface lay a raw vulnerability waiting to be exposed. This dynamic interplay between bravado and vulnerability added depth to Poison's music, resonating with audiences and contributing to their enduring appeal. Michael's ability to channel the emotional complexity of the girl group era injected a fresh perspective into Poison sound, capturing the essence of both past and present musical landscapes. Bon Jovi, One a Dead or Alive, 1986 An essential subgenre within the domain of hair metal is the power ballad, celebrated for its emotional depth, soaring melodies, and dramatic crescendos. In this iconic Bon Jovi composition, the band offers fans a poignant narrative of the challenges inherent in life on the road, delivering their message with a sincerity and passion that resonated deeply with listeners worldwide. Set against a backdrop of grainy black and white visuals, the accompanying music video exudes an aura of cinema verite du chevu authenticity, capturing the gritty reality of the band's journey amidst the glitz and glamour of the rock and roll lifestyle. Beyond its musical and visual appeal, the song serves as a testament to Bon Jovi's ability to connect with their audience on a profoundly personal level. Through their heartfelt performance and compelling storytelling, the band transcends the confines of genre, offering a universal anthem that speaks to the resilience and determination required to pursue one's dreams in the face of adversity. In doing so, Bon Jovi cements their legacy as not only pioneers of the power ballad genre, but also as cultural icons whose music continues to inspire and resonate with generations of fans. White Snake, Here I Go Again, 1987. David Coverdale, renowned as the lead vocalist of Deep Purple during the 1970s, underwent a remarkable transformation, reinventing himself as a hair metal icon with a smash hit that reshaped a 1982 White Snake single. In this revamped version, Coverdale made a subtle yet significant alteration to the lyrics, swapping out a potentially misunderstood line to ensure inclusivity and avoid any unintended offense. Coverdale's transition into the realm of hair metal saw him delegate the demands of rock star charisma to his then girlfriend, the vivacious bachelor party actress Tawny Kitteen. In the accompanying music video, Kitteen stole the spotlight showcasing her fearless spirit by executing splits and daringly crawling out of the window of a moving car. Her uninhibited energy and captivating presence eclipsed Coverdale's own onstage persona, underscoring her undeniable magnetism and leaving an indelible mark on the visual landscape of the era. Brittany Fox, Girl School 1988 In a 2015 interview, drummer Johnny D reflected on Brittany Fox's fashion aesthetic, revealing their aspiration to emulate the iconic style of Van Halen, decked out in striped pants, sporting capesios, and teasing their hair to towering heights. The band spared no effort in embodying the extravagance synonymous with the era. Handkerchiefs adorned every available space, adding to the ensemble's flamboyance. This penchant for excess is vividly showcased in the band's music video, which unfolds in the unlikely setting of a girl's school. Amidst a backdrop of glitter, fringe, and ruffles, Britney Fox unleashes a sonic onslaught infusing every riff and arpeggio with a sense of theatricality and grandeur. This visual spectacle epitomizes the spirit of the era, where no detail was too extravagant and no setting too audacious for rock and Lita Ford, Kiss Me Deadly 1988. In the predominantly male-dominated landscape of hair metal, few women managed to carve out their niche successfully, with Lita Ford emerging as a notable exception. With a career spanning over 12 years, Ford's journey began as the lead guitarist for the iconic band, The Runaways. By 1988, nearing the age of 30, she defied conventional expectations and continued to command attention with her undeniable talent and fierce stage presence. Despite the overtly sexualized imagery often associated with the genre, Ford adeptly captured the essence of teenage frustration and rebellion in her lyrics. Clad in a leather bustier and performing amidst the whirring of a wind machine, she delivered lines like, I went to a party last Saturday night he didn't get laid, I got in a fight, with an electrifying intensity that resonated with audiences. Ford's ability to infuse her music with authenticity and raw emotion transcended gender stereotypes, 
earning her respect and admiration within the male-dominated world of hair metal. Through her fearless expression and unwavering commitment to her craft, Lita Ford cemented her status as a trailblazer for women in rock, leaving an indelible mark on the genre's history. Great White Once bitten twice shy 1989 Despite possessing the quintessential look of a hair metal band, Great White initially struggled to find the right song to catapult them to stardom. In an era where hits were paramount, bands often sought the assistance of seasoned songwriters like Desmond Child, renowned for crafting chart-topping hits such as Dude Looks Like a Lady with Aerosmith and I Hate Myself for Loving You with Joan Jett. Alternatively, bands could opt for a shortcut by covering a classic song. For Great White, their musical Zenith arrived unexpectedly with their rendition of a 1975 album track from the solo debut of Ian Hunter, formerly of Mock the Hoople. The lyrics, chronicling the trials and tribulations of life on the road, struck a chord with audiences, resonating as timeless truths within the realm of rock and roll, from the woes of a malfunctioning tour bus heater to the complexities of romantic relationships. These themes encapsulated the universal experiences of rock musicians, elevating the song to anthem status. In the end, Great White's decision to breathe new life into a classic track proved to be a stroke of genius, solidifying their place in the annals of rock history. Through their authentic portrayal of the rock and roll lifestyle, the band affirmed their prowess as storytellers, connecting with fans on a deeper level and leaving an enduring legacy within the genre. Enough Zeno, New Thing 1989 as genres evolve, there often comes a point where their defining characteristics risk becoming tired cliches. In such moments, innovative bands seek to reinvent the formula to stay relevant. Chicago's Enough Zenough faced this challenge head-on by retaining the hallmark elements of big hair and big guitars while infusing their sound with a psychedelic twist. This artistic evolution was mirrored in their fashion choices, characterized by fluorescent colors and bold patterns, a departure from the norm within the genre. However, this bold experimentation proved to be divisive among fans of glam rock. While some embraced enough Zenith's psychedelic reinvention, others found it to be a step too far from the genre's traditional aesthetic. This tension was humorously encapsulated in an episode of Beavis and Butthead, where the titular characters offered their critique of an Enough Zenith video. Butthead's opinion, succinctly delivered to Beavis, captured the sentiment of disillusionment among some fans. Glam rock just isn't what it used to be. Despite facing criticism, Enough Zenough's willingness to push boundaries and challenge expectations showcases their commitment to artistic growth. While their psychedelic approach may have alienated some within the glam rock community, it also earned them acclaim for their boldness and creativity. Ultimately, their experimentation serves as a reminder of the importance of innovation in keeping genres fresh and vibrant. Wart, Down Boys, 1989 the decline of hair metal reached a symbolic turning point in 1992 when the members of Warrant arrived at their record label, anticipating to find posters of themselves adorning the reception area, only to discover that their space had been usurped by Alice in Chains. This jarring moment underscored the shifting tides within the music industry, signaling the waning influence of hair metal in favor of the emerging grunge movement. Prior to this pivotal moment, Warrant had enjoyed considerable success, boasting five top 40 hits. Among them, their debut single stood out as a standout achievement, though it's the crassly memorable video for Cherry Pie, featuring Bobby Brown, that often garners attention. However, it's their music video for Down Boys that encapsulates the fleeting nature of rock stardom during the era. In a clever homage to Talking Heads' concert film, Stop Making Sense, the Down Boys clip compresses the narrative into four minutes, transforming it into a parable of the transient nature of rock stardom. The band performs in an empty warehouse, accompanied only by their instruments, until gradually, a lighting rig, a stage set, and an audience materialize. Yet, as quickly as the scene is set, it dissipates, leaving the warehouse empty once more by the video's conclusion. This visual metaphor poignantly captures the ephemeral nature of fame within the music industry, particularly within the hair metal scene. As the genre's popularity waned and new movements emerged, Bands like Warrant found themselves confronting the harsh reality of their fleeting moment in the spotlight. Mertley Crew, Don't Go Away Mad, Just Go Away, 1989. By the time Mertley Crew unleashed this track, the fourth top 40 single from their multi-platinum album, Doctor, Feel Good, the band had reached a level of prominence that allowed them to toy with the conventions of a pop hit. 
Despite the song's exuberant kiss-off lyrics, its structure deviates from the norm. The verses dominate the first half, while the choruses take center stage in the second. In a surprising departure from their usual carnal rock star fantasies depicted in many of their other videos, the accompanying music video presents a different narrative. Frontman Vince Neil takes on the role of a jet-setting rock star, depicted flying across the country in a private plane to make it just in time for band rehearsal. This portrayal offers a glimpse into the glamorous yet demanding lifestyle of a rock icon, showcasing the band's larger-than-life status and their ability to navigate the pressures of fame and success. This unconventional approach to both song structure and visual storytelling demonstrates Mertley Crew's willingness to push boundaries and experiment with their sound and image. It also reflects their evolution as musicians and performers, showcasing a maturity and depth beyond the typical rock star bravado. Slaughter, Up All Night 1990 Slaughter emerged from the ranks of Las Vegas musicians who honed their craft while playing alongside a former Kiss guitarist in the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. With their roots firmly planted in the rock scene, Slaughter delivered a sound that epitomized the essence of the genre, complete with crunchy guitars and thumping choruses. Their song not only satisfied the appetite for hard-hitting rock, but also showcased an innovative approach to fan engagement. In a precursor to modern social media outreach, the band utilized their music video as a platform for direct interaction with fans. A notable feature in the video was the phone number prominently displayed on the drum kit, accompanied by the message, This Space for Rent. This number served as a hotline for fans to access exclusive band information, including tour dates and other updates. This innovative fan outreach strategy demonstrated Slaughter's forward-thinking approach to connecting with their audience and capitalizing on emerging technologies. By leveraging the music video as a medium for direct communication, the band effectively bridged the gap between themselves and their fans, fostering a sense of community and loyalty within their fans. Cinderella, Shelter Me 1990. In 1990, a surprising blend of adenoidal upper register vocals and bluesy slide guitar proved to be just as attention-grabbing as traditional power chords. Tom Kafer's vocals on this single were not only distinctive, but also infused with a soulful quality that resonated deeply with listeners. In the song, Kafer addresses themes of hypocrisy without succumbing to vindictiveness, striking a balance between raw emotion and introspection. The accompanying music video, set against the telethon theme, Features an eclectic mix of talent, including Shelley Duvall, Pamela Anderson, and Dweezil Zappa. However, the true standout is the inclusion of the legendary Little Richard. His presence underscores the timeless allure of rock and roll showmanship, highlighting the genre's ability to pay homage to its roots while embracing new sounds and influences. Ultimately, this single and its accompanying video encapsulate the essence of pop metal's evolution demonstrating how unexpected combinations of sound and imagery can captivate audiences and defy genre conventions. Kafer's impassioned vocals, coupled with the bluesy slide guitar, serve as a testament to the enduring power of rock music to inspire and provoke thought. Guns N' Roses, a strange 1991. Guns N' Roses' early music videos captivated audiences with their exceptional songs and intense charisma. However, as the band skyrocketed to fame, they transcended the confines of both the hair metal genre and traditional rock video conventions. Directed by Andy Morahan, their promotional videos became captivating spectacles, blending big-budget extravagance with introspective glimpses into frontman Axl Rose's personal struggles, as evidenced by his choice of attire, such as the Charles Manson t-shirt. One of the most notable aspects of these videos is their unintentional comedic elements, which have since become cherished by fans. Take, for instance, a scene where the Sunset Strip is submerged in water and populated by dolphins, while guitarist Slash emerges from the ocean like Botticelli's Venus, effortlessly shredding a solo despite being soaking wet. This surreal and humorous imagery not only adds depth to the band's visual storytelling, but also showcases their willingness to embrace creativity and experimentation. By infusing their videos with unexpected elements, Guns N' Roses challenged audience expectations and left an indelible mark on the landscape of music videos. The journey through the realm of hair metal is a kaleidoscope of extravagant visuals, infectious tunes, and larger-than-life personas. As we reflect on the genre's zenith moments, we're reminded of its unparalleled impact on both music and culture. From the towering wigs and flamboyant performances to the audacious fashion choices and over-the-top music videos, Hair metal embodied a spirit of excess and exuberance that captivated audiences worldwide. 
Yet, beneath the glitz and glamour, there lies a deeper narrative of creativity, innovation, and resilience. Bands like Def Leppard and Autograph showcased not only their musical prowess, but also their meticulous attention to detail and relentless pursuit of artistic excellence. Others, like Great White and Warrant, found success by breathing new life into classic tracks or pushing the boundaries of genre conventions. Moreover, the era's icons, from Brett Michaels of Poison to Lita Ford and beyond, shattered stereotypes and defied expectations, leaving an indelible mark on the history of rock and roll. Their music spoke to universal truths and experiences, resonating with audiences on a profound level. As we bid farewell to the heyday of hair metal, we're left with a treasure trove of timeless anthems and unforgettable moments. While the genre may have faded from the mainstream spotlight, its legacy lives on in the hearts of fans and the sounds of future generations. So, as the curtain falls on our journey through the world of hair metal, let us remember the passion, the spectacle, and the unbridled joy it brought to millions around the globe.